nine eight seven six five. So this is the third and final map. Unknown versus Play Clan Base Europe Cup 26. The deciding map going to be Grim Dungeons. Probably Lincoln off the start, getting a rather unfortunate spawn for getting any items. But one of the oldest maps, the most traditional maps. I mean, both teams will have experience on it. Yeah, and that's a great start to the map, actually, by Lincoln. You saw he got nothing on the start, but what did he do? He regrouped with his team, and there was a rocket launcher waiting there. Do some serious damage now, so he survived it out. Might even get the second red. That's kind of just say, don't just commit suicide. Oh, he's going to be caught in the back there. Mobius, that is a supremely good steal of the red. Hazard, though. Pulling out the nade for the frag on it, and now we're looking at power at times. I mean, they could spawn after 30 seconds. I don't think anybody's ready for that, but... Battle suit any second. There it is. The power up looks like it's going to drop down. Senti and Mobius. Double power up for play. Senti only had two health over that quad. Yeah, so unknown. They're the team that weren't ready for those first power ups. Of course, they didn't know the time, so can't blame them for it, really. Yeah, it's difficult on the first set of power ups. I just feel like the quads are the more guaranteed power up if you're going to try and set somebody up for something. But both power ups have survived it out. Looks like Play are going to be in control of this highly prized Red Armour area. Yeah, they've got a slender four frag lead at this stage. Nothing significant at this stage, of course, but it gives them a good start to the map, and that's what you want on the third map, of course. Yeah, you do have to look out these positions on this map. Yeah, and he'll try and slowly work his way. Well, no, he's decided... Rails a no-go area. Doesn't have any interest in trying to work his way into lower yellow. Looks like he got He's... a call, teammate. Yeah. You do want a rocket launcher in that zone. He does only have a shotgun to work with. Maybe. Yeah, it's not. It's not a good position to push into with no rockets. That's for sure. Now, if you come up against a rocket launcher who has a yellow armor, even if he doesn't have a yellow armor, it's a fight you can lose even with your red. Here he is. They're trying to bait him in a little bit. I feel. Yeah, you have to be careful, of course, because first rocket. In those positions, usually decides to fight. There you go, Mobius. I mean, he has a nice stack though, so he's got some armor advantage probably. This is uh, decent. He's gonna need to stay down here now, lock off this battle suit position. Decides to drop off. Yeah, it's time though to think about what defensive positions are gonna take, or whether he's gonna use his rail to rail in at the quad. There's multiple players with rail. Well, he could be yeah. the guy that's gonna run the power. It's double stack this red. No, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not sure their timing was spot on there. But moving away from that rail position, let Lincoln get in. He's gonna catch Lincoln out. Gerpa, pretty strong quad coming through. Winds are stolen away the battle suit. I have to say, it wasn't a great setup. No, I can't believe Play have come away with no power up there. I think their position was totally off. You can kind of tell often with these power up setups, you know, 30 seconds before whether they'll be a good one. It really wasn't on that occasion. Gup with two frags in this run, he's still stacked. He can. Hasn't seen anyone yet. It's strange. There we go. Senti wasn't quite aware that Gup was coming up the bounce back behind him, was he? Yeah, and there's no time to react. The second that lightning gun hits you, you're pretty much dead. And Gup will want to push out and take over this up the yellow, get as much advantage from it as he can. He has got the next lightning gun picked up. Doesn't take any damage. Got two frags as well. Yellow armor should be up excellent. very soon. That is excellent work by Gerpa. He is out of lightning gun ammo now, though, so there is a greater danger. Oh, okay, there's a railer now, and this is a threat. He wants to switch away. He's going for grenades. That's a wise choice because he was always going to go down there. In fact, he takes Optimizer with him, so that's actually very good work by Gerpa. Yeah, and Unknown are now clearly in control. That play from Gerpa, the double power-up, it's really cemented themselves into a good position. I think there was a possibility, maybe, that Unknown could have looked to send an additional player to support Gerpa. I'm not sure if there was any pressure on the red at the time, but they required the attention of the other three players, but there could have been an opportunity to try and, you know, support Gerpa, keep control of that quad area for longer. Well, now on Wynn's point of view, he hasn't got too much to work with, but he does have a rail gun. He'll want to health up desperately with that one health. Couldn't even drop down here because you take full damage. But 
Bowsuit going to be up any second. Quad 100 armor. Knees optimizes a race through and Mobius take that early entry damage. Hazard coming in. 100 armor stack. Is he going to go up there? That's wise. Don't try and take that bounce pad attack. We switch back to Uri. He's going to catch Lincoln out and stack Gerpa as well. Two flags in two seconds. Worked out beautifully for Puri, and now they just got to watch this rail doorway heard. His opponent there, it was the battle suit as well. Lightning gun against Hazard here, could be in trouble. It was stacked though, Hazard. Does it a rail shot? And that's just a pretty wise thing to do turn away and pick up the frags rather than trying to hunt down that battle suit. Yeah, the battle suit was not in a position to be able to support his teammates, and they were easy prey for Puri. Smooth. Not really made any inroads into that frag difference though after that. No, it hasn't. It's only a couple of kills after all that Puri picked up, and you know, once he was down, it's kind of the end of their attack on the red. It is still in the hands of Unknown. Now making a push through that shotgun move. Hazard having to back off here is going to crater. Very strong push from play. The only problem is, you know, they pushed into the room, but, you know, there wasn't time for anyone to get back into that shotgun position, which you saw just allowed Hazard to push straight back through, although he was dealt with. Yeah, that's pretty much what you learn. The more experienced you become at this map is just when to just stand in a position, just block off a room on this map. Even if you haven't got too much, just stop anybody rushing through and then you really do secure the red armor. We see Mobius is in a good defensive position at the moment. He's got like 50 odd armor, rocket launcher, shotgun, he's even got a rail to be aggressive with. And we'll see this time what play can do from the red side of the map because, you know, last time we saw their setup for power-ups when they were controlling the red was, was terrible. Impressive. They came away with no power-ups. Cheeky little rail through there doing some damage. He needs more ammo to really do anything more. But we can see Lincoln, he's probably the guy who took the rail damage, down to 30 on health. And Optimizer's probably in a better position than Lincoln is. He could do with um, some rocket ammo though, or a rocket launcher. There one is. Tempting. Oh, there's the quad inside the room. He does hit some rocket damage, and Lincoln goes down. Now, I need to just make sure they secure this room, and really, I would have wanted to be moving out and pushing out if I was him. Yep, red is secure. Just make sure you get out and do as much damage as possible. It does pick up that frag right at the end of the run, stopping any kind of threat. I think killed a stacked player, so yeah. some advantage gained from that. Of course, they are behind, and you know maybe there was more of an opportunity to push out and be more of a threat. It's an unusual map. I mean, generally speaking, you don't get a massive turnaround of frags. But then sometimes, if you get a real lockdown on the map, you can have massive frag swings in a very short period of time. But when you get to this caliber of player, and opponents you're playing against, it's probably not going to happen. Such a well, it, it, turnaround. It does happen, but it's harder to create a situation where it can happen. You know, we can still see games where you know you'll see 30 frags, and you know 25 of them will be made by the same team. You know, once they have good enough control. Because you get so many frag kills on uh, spawn kills, sorry, on this map, and they are actually starting to bring this back now. I mean, it's a very close, impressive, close game anyway in terms of frag count. It's just a slow scoring map at the moment because they're playing quite defensively. They're going to wait for the next power-ups. There could be an attack coming on from unknown at the battle suit. That's how I'd read it if I was play at the moment because your positions are not very good. Yeah, when you're too passive, you you invite an attack on you know what is effectively your power up. So when you're at the red, if you're not putting enough pressure on the quad, then you kind of invite pressure onto the suit. Easy quad grab for wins. Gonna go and rush in on this battle suit. Is he gonna catch out the battle suit? He is. Pushes him into the void. There is wins. Goes to the bounce pad though, and he's caught badly by Senti. So both power ups defeated pretty easily. Yeah, that's kind of disappointing, I think. That was an opportunity to do more with that quad. And I think it was Hazard, wasn't it, with the quad? Wins, I, I, I was, but I don't know. I was surprised that the battle suit didn't worry about more of a threat from the quad potentially coming that direction. It was focused on the spawner. It is only a three frag gap, though, so play have been bringing it back this last minute. Two frag gap now. Yeah, the, the play at the red has actually turned out a lot better than at the start of the game, where they didn't do that much with it. 
But it's starting to actually make an effect on the game now. And it is all about how you use it after all. I mean, just having the red doesn't mean anything unless you've got the players who can make use of it. I'd like to see uh, play be more proactive now. They do have Yeah, the definitely. Reds. I mean, again, we see Senti looking to push this position here. You know, he's got the stack. All he, all he has to do is push. I think, you know, he just needs to think about hitting that first rocket. Because as soon as he does, he wins the fight. He's got Purian support as well. They were just doing that to get the rail, though. Teams are oh, good kill. Watch out for That's the spawn. nice. There it is. And you can pick up so many frags from just getting these quick frags and then converting the spawn. Oh, he's moved in excellent timing here. Such a threatening position. He has got a chunk of armor as well to work with. He can catch them out here. Oh! Don't really know why he was trying to peek upwards. Bit of a disaster that. With the quad puri with the very safe rocket jump. Red armor taken right in front of him by a teammate. He's not got too many rockets to work with, only got three shots left. Needs to connect with them, just connect with one, just going for that rail shot. Quad has backed off though, suggesting maybe he's weak. It's that rail, Link has pinned him in the corner, he does take out the quad though, and wins off the spawn. Very dangerous though, being pinned up against the wall like that by the quad. Had to hit his shots at that point. Did. It worked out quite well for play. They are now in the lead. Yep, a good passage of play for them. It's the most significant lead they've had so far in this game. What I expect to see from Unknown is them go really aggressive on the red. They have just seen their lead whittled down and overtaken by the control of the red by play, so surely they're going to react to that. And yeah, they have actually moved in here. Yeah, and in, if it comes down to an attritional fight over this red area, you, know, you would put unknown the favourites to win that. They are on top at the moment so you know they'll be looking to just set themselves up nicely for this next set of power-ups. Although you know when you see a player like wins with red you think it's more likely that he will look to go aggressive. And he's got two teammates down here as well. Here we go unknown rushing into this red room. It's pretty much secure anyways. They want to play with a machine gun. It's just taking damage from his teammate there wins. Red armor will be in the hands of unknown as well and Wins with 67 armor, lightning gun and shotgun it is looking like a dangerous beast leading up to this power-up play. I'd like to see the teams be a bit more proactive about attacking their opponent's power-ups. That's actually where we've seen the success of uh, Deliberate Murder come in recently, just how proactive they are on the power-up plays. Well, we have seen one instance where Unknown took the quad to the suit and was able to kill it. But yeah. they are very close in time at the moment that... No, it should be more about players putting pressure on rather than the power up going to the other power up. Yeah. Wins does is threatened a little bit, but with a double stack red, it shouldn't be too much trouble. And now the quad is going to have to hit a lot of lightning gun against Wins. He's not going to win that one. The sheer armor that Wins had. There's no team support in that area either. But look at all the spawns right behind Wins. He's going to pick up so many frags. Five frags in this run for make that six. And even damage to that that player as well off the spawn. That is a very effective power run by Wings. Yeah, really impressive. That's uh, really established their lead. But although they haven't totally secured this red yet, there's still a risk of. You can see they're all the other side of the map to Lincoln, so he wasn't going to survive very long there. Get from Wings coming in with only one gun between them. Wise by Gerpa though to switch away from his lightning gun, so there is now a chance to re-attack this red, whereas if he'd have dropped the lightning gun to play, that would have just been you know, cementing their position more and more, giving them weapons to defend red with. They've managed to get into the back end, and this is always a good idea if you can rush into the room. Get that position to block off the spawns, and then you make your opponents have to look in the opposite direction to the actual entrances to the room. Spread the field of view. Murray diving in there, gets taken out pretty comfortably by Gerp, who's got a nice chunk of armor to his name, I think he's got the red armor. Run out of ammo though, there it is, the crate, look at it, so happy he was to see it, they didn't expect it to be up. Red armor would be up any second, looks like Gerp is going to move down and grab that maybe himself, he is. And he could just do with uh, another weapon here, considering his armor stack. 
But yeah, really needs a rocket launcher or something so he can then try and push out and keep these entrances secure. Because at the moment, you know, they were picking up the kills, but no one was able to get in a position to stop the fight, you know, coming back into the red room over Well, Lincoln's done a great job. I was going to say, the quad here is going to have a massive advantage. What? He, I think he must have just got railed there. Yeah, he got railed as, as he jumped, exactly. Lincoln taking two easy frags there. They should have been more aware that the quad would have been on the map there going up the bounce pad. That's two just easy frags, no effort. Lincoln then dropped extra lightning gun ammunition by Hazard. Play nowhere to be seen quite wisely. There's no way they could afford to test the red armor when there's a quad on the loose. Very good LG from Lincoln. They're just dumping the jump as well to try and draw out a free fire by Optimus. Yeah, they've actually play has mitigated the effect of the double power up extremely well, you have to say. It's not really impacted the score too much. With only two sets of power ups left, that's quite important for them. They couldn't afford to fall behind much further than they are at the moment. What will they do on this one? They lost out on the double power up there. They not got control of the red. Is one team going to be proactive? You say the ball should be in the court of unknown. They should have the better stack across the board. Well, unknown have the lead, so it's possibly why they're not actually going too aggressive. But you know, there isn't the play at the moment. They have to be very defensive just to try and rebuild. And they have to just ensure that they're well set up on this quad. That's you know their only way back in probably at the moment because I don't think they have enough resources to really challenge elsewhere on the map. Love to see Unknown really push out and attack that quad here, really cement their lead. Don't think they're going to risk it, in all honesty. No, they don't need to. They're so far ahead, all they have to do is be safe and make sure they get battle suit. You know, they get the next two battle suits and they'll win. Yeah, they, they seem to be in pretty decent defensive positions actually on this occasion. Compared to what we saw playing earlier on. Got all the angles covered. Puri, 100, 100 stack. Delay on the battle suit pickup, of course. That's an interesting. Uh, well, I don't know quite why that happened, but Puri's missed his opportunity to catch Lincoln out and push him into the void. Just dropping onto the bounce pad rather than by it. Yeah, and Puri knows that his quad will expire way before this suit does, so. I mean, Lincoln's not going to delay his attack, but if he did, this quad would expire. Quad back. It's a very nice rocket taking out the threat of the quad, so. Lincoln shouldn't have too much to worry about now, though he's taking a lot of damage from uh, his teammates. Yeah, in the end, the quad wasn't the threat, oh, it was the no. rest of the two. So, we've got one set of power-ups left, and it just hasn't really gone the way of play. Since uh, Unknown caught up again. No, it has been a back and forth game, but it does look at the stage that there is no way back to play. 20 francs. They, they need an amazing run up to these power ups. Let's see what happens. That was a great rocket by Hazard. Yeah, again, just cementing how good of a rocket player he is. Yeah, every time we watch his point of view, in multiple games now, we've seen him hitting some very nice rockets. They tend to get a lot of jewelers that good with rockets. Of that. Yeah, and that's Hazard certainly not really known as a jeweler. He's, you know, played at very high levels in TDM and CTF, so known more as a team mode player. I always suggest somebody of uh, exceptional ability though when they are a good rocket player, because you know most people can rail pretty decently. Yeah, it's the hardest. Uh, grenades, I guess, or plasma. Maybe it's the hardest weapon to use effectively. Quite going to be in a few seconds time and it looked like play were in position until Senti ran away. I don't really know what the situation is now. Well, pretty much not in position. Wind's taking that one. I mean, that should cement victory here. Oh my god, player in terrible position, but Optimizer does get away with it. No so weapons, weapon. though. It's just a terrible feeling, you know. He wants to at least try and make an effort to bring this game back, but he's got none of the tools needed to do it. Nothing's up for him, that's so unfortunate. Might pick up a gauntlet frag here. <laughs> Come on, you can do it! Yes, takes out Gurkha, but it's not going to be enough. It looks like Unknown going to take victory. Two to one.
Yeah, and it's been a very good game for both teams, you have to say. There's been no real domination other than on the first map. It's been very even. It's just a shame to play, but that's now their second loss of the competition, and I don't know, I kind of think that leaves it unlikely that they can qualify now, really. It's a pretty intense game between these two teams. It would have been nice to see both teams a little bit more warmed up in the competition and meet at a later stage, perhaps. Yeah, I think, that, I think that now leaves play needing to beat Sito, and we've seen how good Sito have looked, and you know, to have to beat them to stay in the competition, that's a lot to ask. I think, though, they're not just reliant on winning, they, they have to beat Sito and hope that Unknown or Plan B lose some games as well.